and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And last day of August. I is think. it? Yeah, it's the 31st. 31st. Today, right? It is the Woo! 31st. Last day of August. That means. Uh, that September. means if I drop my newsletter today, I have not missed the month of Good August. For you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I love September. September, sh- other than the fact that we you know have to w- deal with the local municipal primary, September is such a great month. Yes. You're looking well, at something. I am. It's a, this one? Sorry. Yeah, that's in the way. There you go. There we go. Um, Sorry, guys. So September is a great month. Kids go back to school. I know they all hate that. But it's a nice, good weather month. You know, cool enough at night to put a sweatshirt or a long sleeve t-shirt oh. on, but nice enough in the day that you can still wear shorts and flip-flops. I, yes, and I'm it definitely a New Englander now because, honestly, even when I was in the tropics and I was, you know, on a beach looking out at yeah. the ocean. You're kind of like, oh, I'm looking forward to it, right? I was like, you know... In New Hampshire, you can have this on a lake yep. or on the ocean, yep. of course, but also not be. You can have all the seasons. Yes. And fall, of course. I mean, how can it not be one's mm-hmm. favorite season? It's like nature becomes yep. candy, and you're just surrounded by all this beauty. Uh, we went forest bathing, as they I saw call that. it. Um, that is sort of like a meditative term. Yeah. Now. So it's sort of the notion of you should spend time, like you know like Thoreau and the deep thinkers yeah. used to do. And, um, you know, obviously we go hiking a lot with the dog and yeah. that kind of stuff. And it was just really pretty. It was out in Bedford. Um, Pulpit Rock? Yeah, yeah, where the the eagle, no. Um, I don't know if it's called Pulpit Rock. It's 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 where there's eagle nesting um, hmm. space. Uh, I don't know. It does you go down Someplace. the road and then there are the, the torn down sort of uh, uh, greenhouses on the left and you turn there. It's part of the Heritage Trail, nice. I think. Yeah, nice. anyway, it was it was really, really pretty and beautiful and nice. And it's always nice to get out and yeah, appreciate nature. Yeah, there's so nature. many really it's, nice places just right in the Manchester and periphery. Oh my goodness, periphery. even down on um, the west side. I don't know if you've noticed we should actually... Uh, talk about it a little bit. I've noticed that all these uh, anti-camping and cooking signs are are going up all over the city. Uh, They put them under the Amoskeg Bridge where that big uh, tent city was. Well, I think they probably, if they don't post it, they it makes it very difficult to say you can't be here because then like. Yeah, yeah, so so I was. You know, like, I mean, as these things go, I'd rather have people be put on notice, yes. you know, so that no one's actually surprised. Yes. But, you know, most people know you should, probably shouldn't be living in the woods yeah. and, you know, hanging laundry lines it's and just leaving not... your crap there. And the when trash, you're done. the and... trash. The trash is what makes me the craziest. Oh, Speaking of, you mentioned the... this. Yeah, Elm the... Street. Oh, my goodness. Filthy. So I feel bad for in town Manchester because they really do try. I saw the guy out there with the leaf blower, but it's like, you, he, they can blow it off the sidewalks, but it's just... Well, ugh. so so basically what I mentioned to Tammy before the show started is, you know, so I struggled to find parking this morning, and I was like, and then I was like, because, you know, we have all the barricades up. And look, I like outside seating. I, so, I do too. So it's a trade-off, like all things in life. But, you know, now that people are out and about yes. again, uh, parking is becoming a little more of an issue. Uh, and then... Going past what used to be Panucci's, which is now called Bar 603, I guess, here on the corner of Elm and Lowell, I mean, it's filthy. It's gross. Like, like it's cigarette butts. It's, it's bar residue. And napkins yeah. and just it's gross. Like I they, mean, it's like someone threw a party and then just walked right. away. If, if these restaurants, this is my opinion, if these restaurants are going to use the outdoor street and sidewalk space outside of their restaurants, which I'm not opposed to, they need to keep it clean, which means if you have a nightclub atmosphere where those people are there till midnight, you're going to have to pay somebody at midnight yep. or at least at four in the five in the morning to clean that. Yeah. Not no, when you get around to it because it's gross. No, it, it needs to be part of your staffing uh, duties. Right. You know, when, you, you when people uh, close down the bar at night, someone they need should to be like sweeping, sweeping it up. Cleaning. And, and maybe have some, I mean, there was one giant trash can that was kind of full and gross right. too. Right, that should be So empty. maybe like figure that part out. Because if it was going to be 95 degrees today, which, you know, randomly it can be, 
That trash is just like stagnant and nasty and Okay, we're not gross. even going to okay. talk about what I Man. smelled it's on gross. the way here. It was over a grate and I was like, I'm it's pretty disgusting. sure that was human waste. Right. And that was not this great is not okay. either. So, so downtown bench. Yeah. Trying, but well, you know we could probably do so. Better. On that same note, with if, a different before, mayor. <laughs> before we got, before we get on the subject of all things free, um, this morning um, someone sent me some screenshots because last week one day uh, Victoria Sullivan, who's running for mayor here in Manchester, did a downtown walk with um, a Florida U.S. representative. Her name's Cat Kamek. Mm -hmm. She's the youngest Republican elected to Congress. She's 37 years old. She's from Gainesville area. So a lot of their issues are the same issues we have here, even though it's in Florida. And, you know, but the same thing. The Except homeless, we don't have gators, so yeah, we're she's better. she's got gators. <laughs> um, but, you know, like the homelessness, the opioids, the, you know, all Oh, all you mean things. all the crises that are going to come back now that they've scared everyone yes. into some kind so, of obedient submission? Someone sent me screenshots because my state rep, who's Heidi Hamer, right, she represents my district, um, was commenting that, like, there's nothing wrong downtown. Her words literally <laughs> were, wow. um, yeah, Elm Street and downtown is alive and well. I haven't heard anyone say otherwise. Say what you want, but residents of Manchester are happy to live here. And I thought... What? Like, everybody knows that there's issues down. If you don't, you're living under a rock. And what was even weirder, I couldn't find the thread myself. I'm like, where is this discussion? Uh, and then somebody pointed out to me, my state rep has me blocked. So I can't read her comments. Wow. Um, is that so, on, uh, and that's just on a public thread? This was on, sort, um, it was on a thread on Victoria Sullivan's political page because she was okay. posting that she was downtown with Kat Kamek. And Heidi um, kind of said, oh my, the horrors of walking downtown Manchester. Did you feel scared? And Victoria's response, which I think is true, that it's unfortunate that a representative of the city, you continue to ignore the businesses and citizens who state their concerns for safety downtown. Many people on this page have expressed concerns about going downtown and mocking them is simply unacceptable. Which is true. If you're going to be, when you choose to be an elected official, you know, pick. well, you can't pretend that there aren't issues, right. right? That is, I mean, that's like the number one problem that we have generally with government, right? There's <laughs> nothing just, wrong. Everything's you fine. Know, oh, everything's just peachy. Oh, no, the gas prices aren't going up. Why would that be? I have no idea, right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's. Um, it just bugged me because I couldn't find it bugged me because one don't. A state rep shouldn't be out on a local person in Manchester's page mocking people who are concerned about downtown Elm Street. Well, I mean, and two, I think it's funny that she blocked me because I've never been rude to Heidi. And she can, like, we will probably never agree on anything, but I'm as friendly as pie. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Anyways, so sure. this week's subject matter: Did you know now that pretty much everything is free? So here's my new slogan, America, where everything is free but, but you. But you. Hey, that's, that's a good one. So before we even get into details, I want to remind people about just one thing. Uh, March 11th, 2021, this year, um, the American Rescue Plan was signed into law, and it expanded the child tax credit for this year um, from 2000 per child last year if your child's under six years old to 3,600. So that's an extra $1,600 a year. So that's a hundred and some odd dollars a month. And if your child is six to 16, it went from two to 3,000. So it's still a thousand dollars more a year. Um, what's that? $75 a month, right? Um, that also goes to those families monthly direct deposits. So they're not waiting to when they file their taxes, oh, nice. they are getting extra money every single month for every single child. Just wanted to preface that because there is extra but, and, money. And that is not, is that, that's not part of the EFAs, right? No, no, no. This is a federal American rescue plan. This is oh, federal okay. So this is someone credit. who's on uh, Anybody. receiving no. anyone. Oh, all, okay. all, all children right now, last year would get a, when their parents filed their tax returns, they get a two, that last year got a $2,000 tax credit. We're not talking oh, about a deduction. I, yeah, we are yeah, talking yeah, yeah, yeah. a $2,000 gimme, basically. They are now getting anywhere from $3,000 to $3,600, but they're getting it 
broken down into a monthly deposit as opposed to when they file their income taxes. Okay. So families with children are uh, already getting extra money. Cuckoo bucks. Now in Manchester, last week it was announced that high school students that in the past had to pay, I believe, $8.50 a month. Maybe it was more. $8.50 a week, a week, which I think maybe is a little onerous, but okay. To ride the school bus to school because state law requires that under high school that the municipality has to provide uh, transportation. But high school students, they don't. Now, do you know the history at all of why it's even mandated that it must be provided? Uh, no. That, but, that was probably a mistake. I'm just going to go out on a limb and be like, ah, there was probably some isolated incidents. And then they were like, let's make this apply to everyone. So, so this, according to the district's transportation coordinator, will cost the district about $61,300. Now, I could be mistaken. But doesn't the school constantly need more funding? And shouldn't we not? That's add to the burden and well I, I mean so basically basically what's happening in Manchester is suddenly there's going to be a free bus ride and then suddenly there's going to be free yeah, meals apparently for everyone. we're gonna so, feed everybody you know call, call me cynical uh, but you know we talk about competition on the show a fair amount right and being proponents of the free market we believe that um you know the more competition you allow between groups the more people excel it's as inspirational and aspirational so basically uh, you know i'm gonna guess because i don't really know what the motivation is but i would assume that because of the well it's free uh, that's what the motivation is it's free no no it's but but you know i wouldn't be surprised if in the past they probably just pocketed that money for the department or gave teachers raises or something like that but now it's being passed through why is it being passed through because one you know, I think parents were pretty shocked after the past year of seeing uh, what the educational level is that is being uh, taught in the schools. Two, the sort of unwillingness to to accommodate actual parental needs as opposed to uh, just being like, oh, we're going to do these things and you better do what we say. Um, and because of the education freedom accounts, which passed yep. this year, of course, which means the money can follow the child. So if you would like to withdraw your child from a school that is not working for them, you can apply for a scholarship or some funds and you can put your child in any school you want, yep. including other public schools. Maybe just the one in your district doesn't work and right. there's a better one across the river. Who knows, right? Or parochial schools or private schools. So... Montessori, any yep. of those, right? So suddenly, what does that mean? Oh, how do we keep the, kids in the school? The people are like, oh no, what? We, how, how do we keep the people in school? So how do people get bribed? Free Wait. stuff. Yeah, it's really it, it's concerning to me. Like, and what's unfortunate in the dialogue, and this is the way people are about anything. If you if you question anything or if you comment anything other than what the narrative is. You know, you're an evil person and you want to see children starve. Because that's what the thread I was laughing, I was reading. And I was like, because people were saying, I don't understand. Why are we feeding all the kids in school two meals a day? And people are like, well, why do you not want poor kids to eat? It's like, wait, hold on. Oh, do you One. remember this? When, when last time when I was running for Senate and I suggested that, well, one of the things we could do if we want to actually empower people is we could do, was it the frying pan plan, right? Where I was like, give the kids a frying pan, give them eggs every week, and teach them how to make a hundred egg dishes. Why can't we Well, you we must want that? children to starve. And then, and then literally, a sitting state rep, Nicole something night, oh, night Nicole whatever. Klein night. Yes, she she was like, no, you. She, I mean, her position was pretty much you can't expect these people to learn how to make eggs. And that's and crazy because I was what, like, that what are, seems like a little are, elitist to me. What, frankly, what, what are we instilling in children and in families when we now we tell them that education is free, which it's not. You know, education costs ten to sixteen thousand dollars per student per year now, depending on where you live and what grade. So it's not free. 
it might be free to them, but it is not free because I pay like 50% of my property taxes goes to the school. So do yours. Yes. You do. So 50% of pretty much everybody's property taxes. taxes. Now we're saying high school students. We're not talking about little children. High school students were, can't even shouldn't even be responsible to get themselves to school. My my older siblings, I lived way out in the boonies when I was in high school. So that's a little different maybe. But I mean, <laughs> Tabby's going to tell her I had to get up at 4 a.m. Really, really early walk. and stand in the snow. <laughs> um, but I mean, if you live in the city, I, I do believe from reading that the system we had where they were punching tickets on the bus of kids with pay. Why didn't they just have a pass? Why aren't we just selling a, t a pass? Come on. <laughs> like, it, it, we all are do it. Why not efficient, Why Tammy? can't they just make know. it easy? In that way, the kids who can't afford that money could just get a pass from the school and nobody, there wouldn't be a big flag that look at Johnny's poor and can't pay for so, the bus. So I did notice the comments on the union. So the union leader had a post about this. They had an article and they shared it on social media. And I almost felt like they were baiting us and I took the bait, right? <laughs> so, so the comment was, Something like, who says there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? I Which think I for, commented for, on for, your comment. <laughs> so for folks who don't know, uh, certainly for libertarians, um, there is this principle, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. It's called Tunstoffel as right. the shorthand. And basically, it's a very important principle because here's the thing. You hear free. And you think, and it sounds free. awesome it's because wonderful. no one's trained you to go, well, if something's free, where is it coming from, right? Because the world is filled you know with limited free? resources. You know what's free? Sunshine. Yeah. That's about, I mean, air. They're, they're gonna figure out a way to tax the it. The beach. Oh, don't the get beach, me wrong. Not free. No. Okay. So, so the thing is, when you hear the word free, a little like light should go off and say, "Where well, you go? Paying? Hmm. Who's actually paying for this? Because obviously, in life, things can't be free. Now, you might think, well, it's free because." Uh, if we're all paying our 50% property taxes, then then it's just, oh, it's the taxpayer, or it's pooled from somewhere, or magic government money, right? But none of those things exist. You pay your tax bill, I pay my tax bill, right. we all pay our tax bill, so that's certainly our money. Then you're like, well, maybe it's the government, the government's <laughs> magic money tree. The government's magic money tree is it's your the tax federal dollars. reserve, right. Or your tax dollars. Yep. Now, your tax dollars can't pay for anything in America anymore. And the Federal Reserve, who's printing the money to give you the free stuff, is why your gas prices yeah. are going up. Okay, and why why steak is now you know, three dollars more, more a pound than, than it, was, it was, right? Because the more money you print to pay for the free stuff the more money there is in the supply of money, the less it's worth. So. There's a little economic monetary lesson for you, but basically there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Not even when the union leader and the mayor and the school board tell you there are. Someone's paying. And so you may think, oh, well, that someone isn't me. Maybe you rent a home, but you're paying because your rent is tied to the property taxes. So your landlord is going to put up your property taxes because he's got to pay for the free stuff. So it would be a lot better if there was less free stuff and, and we just priced in what things cost. Now, someone may have an economic need, yes. but then we could have a program where we Which go. Which we did, we do. This is what boggles my mind. We had the free and reduced lunch program. But see, here's what the problem is. But then is. everyone was like, oh, Whoa. no. So let's go back. 2019, free and reduced lunch program. It's based on a certain percentage of poverty level, right? You're eligible for free and reduced lunch. And then that those students that get free and reduced lunch, also those schools also get extra funding from the state because there's the presumption that it costs more to educate the kid that can't afford food because I don't know what that correlation is. But anyways, so that that was 2000, say 19, 2008. And the normal, the poorer families were eligible to sign up. They have to sign up to, for their child to get free and reduced lunch in school. Fine. That's supplement. That is funded from the federal government, supposedly the program, right? Magic money. Magic money from, from the, the magic money tree. So then COVID came along and we, made all the kids go home. 
So guess what those parents didn't do? They didn't sign up for free and reduced lunch because their <laughs> kids weren't in school. So now, uh, no, no, but I'm sorry. Didn't all those kids starve? Well, they to must death? have. Well, I think we were delivering. You know, so so they didn't sign up. So now I would have thought since they didn't sign up, but that would be okay because we're not feeding them, right? If if Susie's home with mom, who can't go to work because we made. The school, everybody they made mom, home. everybody stay home. <laughs> but if Susie's mom is now feeding her at home and Susie says, Susie's mom says, well, I'm not going to file for free and reduced lunch because my kid's not in school. Why would the school district be concerned about that? Because isn't that money directly correlating to food for those students? So if you're not feeding the students, why are you concerned that you're not getting the funding to feed the students? So now this year, only... Um, in 2019, 2020, they received 59% of enrollment applied for free and reduced lunch. But for this year, it's only 43% of enrollment. So they're upset that not as many families are applying for the free and reduced lunch. No, what they're and I'm like, wait a minute. Mm -mm. But what? what they're upset about is the 30% of parents who have said not yeah, good I, I, enough we are taking our children elsewhere thank you get well, with the program and fix your mess Manchester. That, what is interesting also and it says if free and reduced because now if you're not getting think about this so this is where competition comes in so those families are not applying for the free food so now the state's not giving the st schools the bonus money for, for the kid that can't learn supposedly because they're poor and get the free food. So we're not really worried about whether kids are eating or not. We're worried about whether the school district's getting more of the state's money or not. And just the terminology that they use, the group says, this group, I don't even know, whatever group it is, the USDA's COVID-19 waivers were an opportunity, I hate when people use opportunity because it usually means something different, for schools to ensure more children are plugged into the grid what does that mean it means more students are plugged into your kids the grid. are little widgets that are just so ways for them to get money the same people that's what they that are think. that will tell us that we hate children because we don't think that everybody should get free lunch or we hate everybody because we don't think everybody should get to ride the school bus for free when they're 17 and a half years old or whatever and all these things are the same exact people who want to who, plug your widget who, into the grid who <laughs> are outraged that parents would like to take the funding that is given to the school currently for their child that those parents no longer feel the school is working for them and take it and give it through the education freedom accounts to another education opportunity for their child. You can't have it always. You can't be, we must give, 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 give because the poor kids, the poor kids, the poor kids. But then when we say, okay, well, let's give those parents a choice so that those poor kids, and I don't mean poor financially, I mean those you know kids who are not getting a quality education can go over here and get a better education. They're like, oh, no, 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 you can't have that money. No, because it's, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's hypocrisy. And I don't understand also why there was, there's four people suing the state of New Hampshire now because their un bonus unemployment money was cut off too soon. One of them is a contractor. And I'm sorry, if you are a self-employed contractor and you cannot make money right now, you are doing something wrong because any person looking to hire any kind of trade person at all in the state of New Hampshire cannot find people to do the work. Yep. Then there was another, there were four people. Another one was a, worked for a sports clips in Concord. Lives in Manchester, cut hair in sports clips in Concord, got laid off because they didn't have enough business, blah, blah, blah. She's got kids. I, at the same time, I Googled, there are jobs at the same business, at sports clips. In Manchester, they are desperate for work. So I'm like, I don't understand. Why doesn't she just go to work? Why are we saying people need to be unable to be evicted? 
Why? We are giving everybody everything for free. Why aren't people, one, getting their butts back to work and two, paying their damn rent? Because incentives matter and when you pay people not to work, they go, you know, this is kind of nice. I could sit at home. I could you know, do some you know, gardening. And unemployment games, benefits are not welfare benefits. If you have reasons why you can't work because of your family dynamic and you've got children that you have to take care of, whatever, unemployment is not the solution. You need to go and apply for social services. And if you don't meet the criteria for social services, then I'm sorry, you're going to have to adapt and make it work. I would love to just not go to work. I'd love for Dan not to go to work. Carla and Louie cannot go to work. And we can all just Let's walk. all not go okay. to work we'll and just, free money will fall from the magical we'll just money walk tree our and it'll just be fantastic. Just, our lives could be as good as North we Korea. We just walk the dogs all day, every day <laughs> and sit in the oh, water. I don't want to forget, uh, Rock Rimmon, this, yes, Saturday, this Saturday, September 4th, uh, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., we West. are doing our first West Manchester Day. Yes. It's uh, It looks like it's really fun. The people organizing it have a lot of family programs yep. that will be happening. They're doing There'll a probably cleanup. be a litter pickup cleanup is where we want to do. Um, I believe there are going to be some uh, children activities, yes. maybe a scavenger hunt, yep. like all kinds of cool stuff. So please come out, come meet your community. West Manchester is an incredible neighborhood. We are incredibly fortunate to live there. The, down by the river, Rock Rumen is, you know, he, uh, hundreds of acreage of walkable trails. Let's make our community what we yep. want. Please come out, come join us, yep. come say hi, come meet the people in the neighborhood, come meet the people from We Heart West, yep. and come join the fun, bring the whole family. It's gonna be you fantastic. You can get more information at westmanchesterday.com, and I also wanna remind people that also Saturday, earlier in the day, is uh, the cruising Downtown event put on by the Rotary Club, so all the car show and all that, and you can walk around downtown and see the dirt on the streets and pick up a bite to eat and see some nice things and you know i'm sure they'll clean and up for saturday cars. um but it's t saturday it's a lot of things you could do that and then you come on over to west manchester day so 1 to 5 p.m rock Rimmon, west manchester hope to see you guys there i think that's all we got if you have any feedback suggestions critical you know, <laughs> hate opinion. mail we love hate the hate mail, mail. we don't guys. mind bring it on uh, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and, and until then you can watch this on youtube and on odyssey and we'll see you next week and have, i forgot to bring my book for yeah. the first time but check out carla garrett.com carla garrett and have a wonderful labor day weekend that's all we got bye bye